this is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? This has been a round of the century. I was not supposed to win this. So now you guys are listening because we did win. And I can glorify God the way I want to glorify him. Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, topic for today's show is Tim Zhu, his uh, excellent performance uh, in stopping and drop, dropping Tim Zhu, uh, Tim Zhu, <laughs> dropping Jeff Horn twice, um, excuse me, on his way to uh, getting an eighth round TKO victory over former welterweight champ uh, Jeff Horn. The bout was scheduled at, and took place at 154 pounds. Um, I want to get into this because there's a lot of reaction to Tim Zhu. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, he's the future. He's it. He looked that good. Oh, uh, is Zhu overrated? I mean, look, let, let's get into the performance. Um, Zhu looked good. There's a lot to like about Zhu offensively. A lot. Um, he, he, he controlled the range well. He was landing the right hand at will. He was looping it in. He was throwing it overhand. Um, the straight right, he was, the, the right hand he was taking Horn apart with. Strong offensive fighter. He's a physical, you know, he's really strong. He's, 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 he's got, you know, beast-like strength to him. Um, and he was trying to make it a scrap. He was trying to make it ugly. It just didn't work for him. Um, I, Honestly, I thought Horn looked a little bit shot. You know, in the post, Horn said it, it's young man sport, and and, and Zoo's a lot younger. Um, and, and maybe that has something to do with me. This is not the best version of Jeff Horn. Um, you know, Horn, you saw his game plan. He was trying to get in there. He was trying to make it ugly. He was trying to make it a dog fight. He just didn't have any luck doing it. Did that have more to do with Horn, or did that have more to do with Zoo? Yeah, my my answer would be it, it had a little bit to do with both. And again, Zoo looked good. There's a lot to like offensively about Zoo. Now defensively, I still think he needs to tighten up. Um, I think he's still very hittable, especially in close. Uh, but from the outside, he uses his length, he uses his range, he uses his boxing ability really, really well. Um, and again, the right hand was money, and, and he fought well on the inside. He did really good work on the inside. He showed me he was a good body puncher. There was lots. There was a lot of a lot of good things to like about Zoo. What I would say is I didn't see anything next level. Uh, it's going to be really, really tough to win a belt at 154 pounds in the future. There are a ton of good fighters at 154. You know, um, you have guys like Rosario who, who already has a belt. Um, like Erickson Lubin, Terrell Goucher, who could win a belt. Uh, Charles Conwell will win a belt, I think. You got guys like Majimov. There are so many good names at 154 pounds, right? Guys, not like um, what's the PBC's guy they, uh, that 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 everyone likes? That uh, Joey Spencer, not him. He's not it, not Spencer. But there are lots of good names at 154, like Conwell, Rosario, uh, Erickson, Lubin. Th those guys, Majimov, um, and I, I think Majimov and Horn all come after those first three names, right? Like I think um, Rosario, Lubin, and um, well, are all better fighters. You know, I, I think they're all more advanced. I think they all have more skills. I think they all have higher upside. Um, which means it's going to be hard for Horn to win it. Uh, to Zoo, it's going to be hard for Zoo to win a belt because because Zoo's going to have to beat those guys. You know, the question becomes: uh, Can Aram get him a shot at a WBO belt? Right? I don't know. Um, there's Patrick Teixeira. Can can he get him that fight? And can he beat Teixeira? That would be the, the the easiest avenue to a belt. Can Aram do that for him? Um, and if he gets, I mean, but we're not talking about him getting a belt. I was talking about him being the future of that division. Him being an all world talent again. A lot like I think he's a good fighter. I'm not sold on him being better than any of those names I just mentioned. If he's not better than any of those names, it's gonna be real difficult for him to win a belt um, in the future. Um, he's got plenty of time. He can still improve. But what I saw against Juan was good. I just don't know that it was next level. I don't know if it was world champion, world you know, world beater type stuff. Um, I'd like to see him step up. I'd like to see him fight Carlos Adamez next. 
If he can, let's see how he does against that. That's a top right guy. It, it's it's an easy fight. It's a guy who doesn't jab. You know, let, let's see how he does. I I think you know, um, this could be problematic for him. You know, but we'll see because he does get hit. So it, it, it's how, and my guess is they want to move him quickly. There's so many people are so impressed with what he did. You know, um. I, again, I'm not unimpressed. I don't think he was bad. I think it was a good performance. I think it was. I think he did what he had to do against a, a veteran fighter who came to make it an ugly scrap. Right. The only problem is that I'm seeing all types of things. You know, um, on, on ESPN.com article, Jake Michaels, right? There was a masterclass performance. Uh, Paulie Malinaji saying he's going to be the best fighter ever from Australia. I don't even know if he's the best fighter from Australia now. With the Maloney brothers, right? I don't know that he's better than those guys, right? So I mean, that's just a lot to that statement. You know, there's a lot. I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's good fighters from Australia right now. I don't even know if he's the best fighter from Australia currently. You know, why is he? Well, he's bigger, so he'll get more attention. But I don't know that he's better. He's better than guys like Fennec and Yo. Know, He's certainly not better than Costa Zoo, right? Like Costa Zoo, like you want to go through Costa Zoo's resume. I mean, it is really impressive stuff. Sean Bay Mitchell twice, Jesse James Lighthouse, Ben Tacky, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, Miguel Angel Gonzalez, Diablo Hotardo, Rafael Rallis. Uh I think those are all the big names. Hugo Pineda, um, and Roger Mayweather. So he's got a Mayweather and a Chavez under his belt. Yeah, I, I can tell you right now, Tim Zhu is not going to be better than that. I, I, I promise you that. Tim Zhu is not a Hall of Famer. Um, well, I've been wrong before. You know, there's talent there. But it, Tim Zhu is not going to have a better career than his father. So that's a, that's a crazy statement. And uh, Jeff Michaels, the ESPN associate, um, you know, the correspondent, whatever we want to call him, said it's a master class performance. Uh, yeah. I, I just don't know how I feel about that. Like, um, I'm just not sure about that. You know, again, master class. He looked like a master. He looked like he, he is a good offensive fighter with lots of like. I'm not sure. I'm not calling that master class. Not against Horn, right? Um, but it was good. You know, th there's not anything to really dislike about it. I'm just not sure how much. I love it. That's all I'm saying. Um, let me know what you guys think. I mean, are you guys more my? Because I've heard voices roll direct. I heard it was overrated performance that Horns totally washed, and, and this was easy pickings. I've heard that uh, that Zeus is going to be exposed next time he fights somebody good. I've heard that. You know, what I'm saying what I'm saying. Is he's good. There's, there's a good foundation to work on there. I just don't know if there's anything world class. Or do you think he is world class? Do you think this is, guy is the goods? Do you think he can beat Rosario? Do you think he can beat? Gush Shay, do you think he can go? Do you think, you know, um, Ruben Madramov, you know, can he beat Teixeira? Can he beat Brian Castano? Can he be any of those guys? I don't know, you know, and he's going to have to, right? If he wants to have success in this weight class, because if he, he's big and he can probably go up to 160, but 160 is murderous row. I don't know that he wants to do that, right? So his future, future is more likely at 154, where he can be a real big junior middleweight. Um, the problem is there's lots of good big junior middleweight, so he doesn't really have anything. You know, he doesn't have anything, any extra gift. He doesn't have
There we go. Uh, let me let me know what y'all think. Uh, uh, give me your opinion on Zua and, and uh, on Zua and what you think his future is. Um, and do you think he went about? What you liked about him, what you disliked about him, all that good stuff. And uh, make sure to check me out. Um, check out the, the article. We're going to rate all of the 154 pounders. Uh, that article will be up on 3D Boxing Blog. Hopefully tomorrow that will be up. So make sure to check that out. And then check out MCR Podcast. You know, me, Rob, and Matt are going to have very different takes on Zoo. Um, Rob thinks he's not that good, but Rob will get into that. And and the hipster hunter uh, – well, we'll get into all that. Uh, follow me at Fight Post. Um, go to fightpost.uk. Fightpost uh, you can find us on Facebook, uh, Twitter. Follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, and you can also listen to the our our, our podcast at MCR, uh, at Mixed Combat Radio on YouTube. Check us out on all forms there. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you. And God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.